Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Do this now. Uh, you slap a 0.35 meter pipe, pretend like this is 0.35 meters, okay? And you keep your hand on it. That was better, <laughs> okay? How much of the wave inside the pipe is inside the pipe? How long is the whole wave? And what is the frequency of the sound that you hear? Remember, we're going to use 343 meters per second as the speed of sound. Yes, we are. Okay, so uh, let's see. So, how, well, how much of a, how much of a wave is in the pipe? I guess I probably should let this up, right? Okay. Go ahead and draw this down here. Let's go ahead and use this one's kind of ugly. I'm gonna get rid of that one. Okay, so how much of it is in the pipe? You can have it, doesn't have to be a full standing wave. She's got two standing waves here, right? Mm -hmm. One bump is half a wave. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Let's see. Get rid of this one over here. We don't need it. Okay, so our pipe is going to be right here. Yeah, you're right. gonna. You got one end is closed, one end is opened, and so you have the two different p standing wave parts mm -hmm. at either end. One ends a node, one ends an anti node. Yeah, check that out. Okay, yep. so how much is in there? A quarter of a wavelength, yep. right? Um, how long is the whole wave? Um, okay, so one is a quarter of a wavelength. That's how Number much of a wave's two, in there. Well, it's gonna be the whole wave is gonna be four times that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so four L, which is gonna be four times 0.35 meters. Yep. Right? So you 3571.4 meters. 1.4? Mr. Boykin does it. Okay. Um, now, what is the frequency of the sound that you hear? Now, again, if you ever, like, Miss Moore, oh, we've got our sound over here. You got it right over here. Yeah, so if you get stuck, you can just go V, v equals D over T and, and put in your appropriate parts, but uh, we want to figure out what the frequency is. So let's go ahead and use this one. And we've got V equals V times the frequency. Uh, oh, wavelength. Wavelength, sorry. Okay, so frequency equals the velocity over the wavelength, 343 meters per second over 1.4 meters. Okay, so 343, oh, that's, that's 343 divided by 1.4, and I get 245. 245 so, cycles per second, 245 heights. <clears throat> Cycle per second, okay. All right, sweet. Okay, so what is the frequency sound you hear? That is the sound. And we can check it with our tone generator if we were prepared. Okay, what part of a sound wave determines how loud the sound is? Hmm. That's let's, gonna be... Let's see, you got wavelength, frequency, amplitude, crest, trough. That's gonna be amplitude. It's amplitude, yeah. Right, so our amplitude is the, um, the displacement from equilibrium. Um, that's what the amplitude, so the bigger the amplitude, the bigger the sound. Yeah. Okay. I should have made that drawing bigger. It's so little. <laughs> okay, what sets, uh, when sets of waves traveling toward, oh wait, what can we gotta go back? We have to do our demonstrations. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, our first one was, I wrote down our board, and I think we're just going to touch base again on how this, uh, we have a quarter of a wavelength inside of our, our pipe here, Yeah. right? Okay. And and the, what you need is if you have a uh, is you have to have a node at one end and an anti node at the other yeah, end. Yeah, so right. And, and since we're talking important. pressure, a node is equilibrium, so that would be room pressure. So at the opening, room at pressure. the open end, you have room pressure, and at the closed end, you've got your uh, so that's a node at the open end and an anti node at the closed end. Wait, these are the anti nodes, right? Yeah, yeah, so at the end you have your hand over, you have a pressure anti-node. The end that's open, hang on a second. At the end that's open, you've got an, a pressure node because that's room pressure. Mm -hmm. At the closed end that you've slapped, that's where you have the anti-node. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so then let's go ahead and open up this guy, right? Put this on. Should we? Well, let's do the demonstration first. Oh, this one right here? Okay. 
So Here, you I'm, take gonna, this. I'm gonna have you take it, yeah. All Why right. is Miss Moore having Mr. Boykin do this? So come over here and look inside. What we have is there's water. Can you see the water? Oh, in there? Yeah, you can see the water. And the water acts like to close the end of the pipe. Oh. And so for this, this is 512 hertz. It has a particular wavelength for this frequency. And if I pull this out, I get to a certain spot where a standing wave, no standing wave, standing wave. Okay, if I have a different pitch, then I pull it out. There's my standing wave. Now, notice I had to bring it out a lot longer. That's because the lower frequency has a longer wavelength. So there's one quarter of a wave inside this, this closed pipe. If I have a different one. So notice how he has to change the length of the tube there. So I can change the length, that's, that's exactly right. Because you have a particular wavelength and uh, uh, that's produced by the sound, by mm -hmm. the, the tuning fork, and you only get a standing wave when you get to one quarter. That's the first one. However, funny things happen. Oh, so you went up a little higher, and once you got to a certain length again, it made the sound. Yeah, and so what we're doing is you get a standing wave when you have a note at one end and an anti-note at the other end. As I continue to pull the pipe out, I got nothing, 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 nothing until I get to another anti-node. Ah. And then all of a sudden I get a standing wave. And the thing is, quarter of a wave, three quarters of a wave, Five quarters, quarters of, of a wave. wave. Five quarters of a wave. S Seven, Seven quarters, quarters of, of a wave. wave. Now, what the heck is going on here? Let's do it. Let's do it. I love this. This is like, uh, here's a standing wave. And at the open end, you've got a pressure node. And so you pull it out of the pipe until you get to an antinode. There's your loud sound. Oh. Okay, you continue pulling it out, nothing, 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 until you get to another oh. antinode, second loud sound. And you keep that, that's one, two, three, three, three quarters of a wave. Now there's a full wavelength, nothing. You got to go to another oh. quarter of a wavelength to get another antinode. So there's one, two, three, four, five quarters. And then you keep pulling it out, nothing, 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 until you get to the next anti-node. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarters of a wave. And Boykin, this is what you're saying. You're saying that that anti-node is the closed... At the closed Oops. end. It's a pressure. That's the... That's like the water right there. Yeah. Okay, that's a really... That, that's all making sense now. Okay. Okay. Trade. Woohoo! So Mr. Boykin took the role of that uh, because... Well, because this is glass, and if you get this a little too close to it, it'll shatter and, uh, you know. Yeah, notice how blurry that is, and it's not because it's out of focus. It's because it's going back and forth 256 times per second, and it's steel. And Mr. Boykin has a lot of experience with yeah. this, so. It, it, and if that thing just touches this, it'll break it. Yeah, it'll, so. It'll shatter the glass. Okay. Uh, what part of a sound wave determines we saw, we talked about the amplitude. We, I can't believe we almost forgot to do that stuff again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when sets of waves are uh, traveling toward each other, interfere at the right frequency, standing waves appear. That's okay. the big idea. And that's yes. the big idea. That's what we are hearing. Those, those standing waves interfering at the right frequency. Yep. Okay. So constructive interference produces a large amplitude, the anti-node, these loud sounds. 
Yeah, that's why it gets louder all of mm -hmm. a sudden because you get you get a, a louder amplitude, mm -hmm. larger amplitude. And uh, destructive interference produces zero uh, zero amplitude. I'm oh, sorry. Destructive ear interference produces zero amplitude nodes. So that just means there is no amplitude. Yep. Right. And uh, and we would have no sound right, right here. Okay. Uh, pipe resonators have waves that reflect from both ends. Yeah. So we're just going through this stuff again. <clears throat> the loudest sound uh, from a closed pipe resonator is a quarter of a wavelength. This is called the fundamental frequency. For a pipe resonator, the fixed length of the pipe determines the frequency of the sound. And we saw that, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna come to that one in a second when we change the length. All right. Okay, but, but you guys saw that, right? We had, we had to have that pipe at a fixed length right? We get the sound because it's at the specific length. Yeah, and that's only one frequency you're going to get out of that. You'd have to have a different length pipe to get a different frequency. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> if you have a fixed frequency, only specific lengths of pipe will resonate. Yep. Like with this fixed yeah. frequency, oh, we have to get that, that to a specific length to get it to resonate. Yeah. What would happen if you could change the length of the pipe? Behold the poster demonstration. Okay, so I can change the lake of the pipe, but I'm at the same frequency. See it getting shorter? And the frequency change. Dom, 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 oh, dom, 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 dom. <laughs> so I have the, so I'm changing the length of the pipe, the frequency, it, you, you heard the pitch getting louder, uh, higher, higher, right? right. Yeah. Not loud, louder than Because the, Length is getting shorter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the water close. Oh, and then example. Another example. The water, like we saw in here. Okay, the water in there, or like we see over here. This is another version of it. Um, closes one end of the pipe, making it a closed pipe resonator. So this is what we had here. You can't see through this. You can. So you can see how this end of the pipe. This end is closed. That end is open. Okay. Ah, oh, back one. Okay. Uh, where is my thing at? So here is your your lab. Okay. And should we do it over there, boy? Again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll move it over there. Um. So, uh, step one. Step one says fill the cylinder with water two thirds of the way to its capacity. Now that'll work. Done. Okay, place the resonance tube in the cylinder. Done. You can vary the length of the air column in the tube by moving the tube up or down. Whoa. Ooh. Okay, select a tuning fork and record its frequency. This one. Okay, so 256. So the frequency, write this down in your lab sheet. And how do I know? I just, it tells me right there. 256. Okay. So strike the tuning fork with a rubber mallet on the heel of your shoe, not on the cylinder. Don't hold it on. Don't smack it on there. Hold the tuning fork. Um, we're going to hold it right here above and we're going to move this um, up and down until we get, we find the loudest sound. There are going to be several loud spots, but you, but you are to locate the very loudest one with the shortest, with the shortest open tube length. So if we hear it up here, we want to find it where it's the shortest. Yeah. Let's do it. That's, that's not it. Keep going. Right there, Wigan? Yeah. Here, go ahead and hit the tuning fork again. And I'm going to call it that. Okay. So now... What measure do do? the distance from the top of the resonance tube to the water level marked. You're going to need a meter stick. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough room here. You good, Boykin? I'm good. I got it. All right, so the top of the water to the top of the resonance. This is going to be hard for you guys to see there. So there's the top of the water. We're going to call it 0 0.32 meters. Yep, 0 0.32 meters. Okay, so point... Three, two meters like that, ladies and gents. 
Yep. Okay, so now it, we're gonna go ahead and give you the diameter of the residence tube um, because it's tricky to measure and we already did it. So so the diameter we used our, oh, <laughs> we, no, used no. This, uh, we used this and we measured the, the inside. The ins oh, 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 the inside. There we go. Yeah, so we measured the inside. Boy, we can measure the inside <laughs> of the tube here. <laughs> okay. Um, so then the, we, uh, should we talk about what, what's going on here on the board? Yeah, we need to, because what happens is the sound wave doesn't reflect up in a flat plane. There's kind of a bubble yeah, like that this, it reflects off of. We have, a, we have a drawing up here. So we've got the height of the actual uh, pipe, right? Yeah. And then what Boykin is saying is that it doesn't reflect off of a flat surface here. Rather, it kind of like emanates like a bubble, right? It's a bubble, right? right. And so um, in order to act, to legitimately account for the height, we're going to make a height correction by adding, we're going to do the height of this plus this height correction. So we're going to do 0.4 times the diameter. Um, we basically are taking this and we're moving it like that, yeah. right? Um, if you had a smaller pipe, it would be less high. A bigger pipe would be more So our high. correction factor will be 0.4 times the diameter that we measured. I don't remember what it was. And then you add that to the height, and that'll give you the more accurate Okay. Length of the resonating column. Yeah. So for this, for the corrected length right here, you're just gonna do 0.4 times the diameter plus the height. You do this part first. Okay. That's our diameter. That's our height. All right. So um. So should, do should that, boys and girls. Right. <clears throat> That's uh, 0.4. Should I do it with them real quick? Times 0.026. And then, not, uh, yeah. should, should they do this part? Yeah, do, you do know, I need to be 0.4 times 0.026 mm -hmm. and add that to 0 0 0.32, and that's your length of your resonating column. Okay, so now you've got your corrected length. The corrected length is, is uh, one fourth of the wavelength. Ha ha. Okay, um, comp compute the wavelength of that sound. So we are trying to find the wavelength. Okay, and what do we have? We have the height, we've got the frequency, uh, well, the, the length, basically the frequency. We know the speed of sound in air is... Yeah, and the question is, how much of a standing wave is inside a closed pipe resonator? And if mm -hmm. you don't remember, go back through and watch oh, the opening again. You know what, I apologize, I jumped the gun. We, we don't want to be using uh, 343. Scratch that, we're just finding the wavelength. So the, what Boykin said is correct. We're just looking at the correct, so just use this to help you. Um, we've got one fourth of a wavelength in the pipe. What's the total wavelength? Yep. Jump the gun on that. <clears throat> okay, using the frequency of the wavelength um, of sound, compute the speed of sound in air. So now, now. Which one of these are you going to use? Figure it out. What players do we have? And that's what you're going to be doing for homework. All right. Okay. Back. <laughs> and we forgot one other thing. So not only are you going to do calculate the speed of sound, an air for that, but we are going to do the exact same thing for which one should we do? How about the medium one? The medium one here? Well, yeah. Well, that's let's see. That's three twenty. Oh, that's the bigger one. Or the little one. It doesn't matter. This one's five twelve. Oh, yeah, it is the middle one. It is the middle one. We want to do five twelve? Sure. So cute. Okay. So the frequency of this one is going to be five twelve hertz. And I don't think we need to change anything else, right? Nope. They only need that. We just need to hit it over there and we need to pull it up and see how long the pipe is going to be where we get the standing. Oh, wire. that's right. Okay. You ready, Boykin? Here, hit it again. Oh. Uh, right there. Right there. I'm gonna use this one so you guys can see it better. Let's call it 15.5. 15 15.5. So 15 point, point 0.155 meters. 0.1555. Now, corrected length, that's again gonna be. You're gonna have to do that thing again. That four times the diameter, mm -hmm. plus the height. Okay, now you guys got it.